You know, churches are out in the community, but we don't see the same type of coverage. No, we don't. That you see with the homicides. That's true. And as I stated, there's more good things being done out there. Right. Whether it's in the schools, whether it's in the churches, mm -hmm. whether it's with the Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, there's more uh, positive things being done, but it's overshadowed. By well, let me the ask you. Um, the Pittsburgh Police has an organization that's done a lot of good also. I believe it's called PACT, P-A-C-T or something. To uh, that that's fact. correct. Could you tell the audience a little bit more about PACT, what they've done? I know that they helped uh, young children at some point. Could you tell us a little bit about those programs? And if you right. would happen to have a phone number where somebody might contact them. Yeah, I, I don't have that phone number. Well, that's okay. But uh, PACT actually... Uh, uh, was started uh, with a handful of people. Uh, All right. The railroad police were there. Uh, our people from the support team uh, right. were there. At that time, it was uh, FOP President Gene Gratton. Uh, he was very instrumental. Uh, okay. Chief Cookie Coleman is now yeah, Chief I, of Wilkinsburg. I have heard of her. Uh, yeah. uh, she was very involved with it. And what they would have is uh, basically a, a carnival day over mm -hmm. here on the north side. Okay. Uh, down by the stadium where the kids from all neighborhoods were able to come in and everything basically was free. Wow. Uh, the hot dogs, the popcorn, the rats, it was uh, all, all free. Okay. They haven't had one in, in recent years. Um, but when you look at, uh, you know, the things that the Bureau of Police is doing, you know, mm -hmm. with our youth programs, you know, we host a uh, summer camp. Uh, Okay. Uh, three, uh, three different times in three different mm -hmm. parts of the city. We are partnered with our Parks and Rec uh, for the city of Pittsburgh, okay. as well as we are partnering with the Pirates. Mm -hmm. and, That's interesting. Uh, we're partnering Chris with will the, be interested in that. Uh, yes, and we're partnering <laughs> with the uh, YMCA. Okay. And one of the founders that have been at the table since we began this program has been Highmark. Interesting. Hi, Mark has uh, always uh, contributed uh, funding to help support mm. uh, this program, it's, it, and it has grown over the years. Uh, we started out with 25, 30 youth each wow. session, where we're now hosting 50 to 60 uh, kids uh, each uh, session. The okay. YMCA has uh, partnered with us, as I stated, and they're willing to take approximately 30 kids from uh, the inner city and send them away for a week at Camp Honiquay. But what happens at these camps? Uh, what do, how does it instill determination and hope? What, what exactly goes on that may give a child that has no hope the, the start, plant the seed of hope? What actually goes on? We, oh, you know what? We, we actually have a call, so why don't okay. we let you finish that thought? All right. And then we'll get the next call. Okay. And then we'll get the next call. Okay. But let me hear you finish that thought about what's going on with the camps. What we do at the camps, uh, we try to show the kids uh, what law enforcement, what police work is about. And okay. the, the kids do get interested. <coughs> uh, by the end of the week, they're very much interested. Okay. We also uh, show them team building skills. We also uh, show them leadership skills. Okay. So they aren't just followers. And at the same time, we instill in them that they can be anything that they want to be. All it takes is commitment and dedication. That there's a lot of distractions out here and not to be distracted, to keep, to keep the focus. Well, that sounds good. Well, what we're going to do now is we'll have Annette get the call. It's probably after your that, sister. Okay, well, <laughs> after that, what I want to do is I want to talk about, you had mentioned that if somebody sees a crime, they need to contact the police. I want to go back to that because what I want to ask you when we're done with the call is what is the percentage or not, you couldn't probably have a percentage, but the element of fear and how much that plays a part in people not wanting to speak to the police. And also a lot of people just don't like the police. Maybe they got a lot of tickets or whatever. So mm -hmm. how does one deal with that? So we'll get to all that fun stuff after Annette answers this call. And I have a feeling this call is going to be an interesting one, so be ready for it. <laughs>
caller, you're on. Okay, this is yep, Diane. Diane. I'm, I'm his, one of his sisters. We knew it was you. I do have a question for you. You say you've been in business for 34 years. Did you start out walking the beat like other policemen, or did you do it first? Uh, yes, actually, I started out walking the beat, uh, working the patrol cars, and that's, uh, that was my beginning uh, with the uh, Pittsburgh Bureau of Police. I also heard you also heard you did something with the Pirates, and I like the Pittsburgh Pirates. <laughs> Uh, yes, the Pirates have uh, partnered with us uh, as far as hosting and helping to host our summer camp programs as well as throughout the year doing different events at the different schools uh, uh, throughout the city of Pittsburgh. Also talk about something about your uniform because I want to know about them stripes on your uniform here because that's exciting also. The audience should, the audience should hear about this because I think you have to have special fights to, to be a policeman, don't you? Are you from the, the Washington, that down, the fit that, the, you know, that police station down uh, Washington Boulevard? Do you work there? No, that's actually one of our zones. That's Zone 5 uh, Police Station. I work over here on the north side of police headquarters. Okay. Uh, just to describe uh, the bands on my sleeves here. The five bands were for the chief, the star is for 25 years, and each uh, hash mark is for a total of uh, four years. And I never have added the other hash marks on, but uh, that's uh, the insignia is on my uniform. So if you add up... Well, that's a good thing. Did you even say you went to Peabody High School, did you? No, I went to Shelley High, High School. School. Oh, well, you should... To my school, Peabody High School, we would have, oh, we probably been at your school any old way. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, we were, were the silly Spartans. Job, and I still hope you keep on your, doing your job real good and have a nice night. And wear that seatbelt, because my friend will get after you. Wear that seatbelt. You're a policeman. You have to wear a seatbelt. That's correct. Thank you. I know. Have a good night. Take care. God bless. Right. Okay. Good night, Diane. Yes, she's right about the seatbelt. I have All to right. tell you a little funny so aside here mm -hmm. with regards to the seatbelt. I've been pushing wearing seatbelts since I've actually started driving about, I was about 18 when I started driving. Mm -hmm. So for 30 years, mm -hmm. before it was cold and the end thing to do, I've been pushing the seatbelts. Mm -hmm. And uh, my sister Diane, that just was on the phone, and my sister Rose, they finally have gotten with the program with regards to seatbelts. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because for a long time, Diane was like, I don't want to wear that seatbelt. It's a pain in the Some mm -hmm. other words we won't say, <laughs> you know. And uh, but unfortunately, we've been through some accidents in life. Mm -hmm. And so now she realizes how important, important. the seatbelt is. Now that's the other thing. This is another slight aside with regards to seatbelts. About out of every 10 accidents, mm -hmm. if a person doesn't wear a seatbelt, how much more likely do you see much more severe injuries and or deaths? How important, in your opinion, as a, as a citizen and mm -hmm. a human being, and then as the chief of police, how important are seatbelts, in your opinion? Seatbelts are very important. As you said it before, it became a state law. Yeah, uh, that was way before that. Uh. Right, seatbelts, uh, if you look at accidents, right. nine out of ten, if the person's not wearing a seatbelt, meaning nine out of ten mm -hmm. of them either are critically injured or it's a fatality. Wow. When you look at the nine accidents, when you look at the accidents just recently in, in our area, right. where the person was ejected from the vehicle, right. fatality. Yeah. And, you know, the seat belts do more uh, to protect you than the harm. Right. Yeah. But uh, they can be a pain in the potatoes at times. Well, it, it's, it's just like anything. Once you get accustomed to putting it on. Right. But I mean, it, you know how sometimes they. Some of them automatically lock up, and, mm -hmm. and you have to readjust them and stuff. But I'll tell you what. It's worth the time and trouble. It's worth the time and trouble, and right. I actually don't feel right without one on. That's correct. 
But That's one right. thing that I want to mention, and I don't know if you echo this or not, but mm. I've actually worn a seatbelt when I've gone from one parking lot to another parking lot, and I've actually seen serious accidents in parking lots. Right. Have you ever had that happen? Uh, yes, when we look at, uh, for example, uh, police officers, and we always tell them as soon as they get in the vehicle to buckle up. Okay. And there's been.